Yo, 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 what's up? I'm not on a break. I got a headache, man. Leave me alone, Pinky. <laughs> oh, bully. <laughs> yo, <laughs> is it random mode all the time? It's not even random mode time, is it? No, dude. What are you doing, dude? <laughs> it's not your. It's not your fault, Kayla. Sorry, your team uh, took another loss last night. Probably don't want to talk about it. Probably don't want to talk about it. Um, tried for yesterday's <laughs> word. Yeah, that works. Did you get it? <laughs> what was yesterday's? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a couple of rough games in a row there, dude. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, feels bad, Kayla. I know, man. That feels pretty brutal. No doubt. No doubt, yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah, brutal, man. Happy, happy Saturday. <laughs> happy Saturday, guys. Is that what... Wait. Was that yesterday's? One of them? Was it... I don't remember that being one of yesterday's uh, random modes. Or were you just putting tentacle in there for, <laughs> like, as a response? I don't know, dude, my head's a mess. My, my, I've got a crushing headache, dude. My, my, it feels like my head's splitting in half, man. Oh, God. Yeah, no, nah, it's not your fault either, Kayla. It's just one of those things, man. It'll be all right. Was it? And that was the last one in history? Oh, okay, cool. Right on. Solid. All right, nice. Oh, for real? That sucks. That sucks. Uh, yeah. So, we got um, more shadows today. Uh, if my headache doesn't uh, start chilling out, dude, it might not be a super long day. But uh, we, got more, we got more shadows today. Um, we are going to put off doing any kind of uh grounded gameplay into because uh the fact i wasn't thinking about i was i was really really considering starting it this weekend um for the foreseeable future being our weekend game but the fact that i won't i won't want to play it next weekend because of uh tears of the kingdom coming out on friday i'll be wanting to play tears of the kingdom all the way through the weekend and then the next week just made sense to put that off. So um, we'll just put off grounded until uh, what weekend will that be? What weekend will that be? That'll be the 20th and the 21st. That's the weekend we're going to start playing grounded. The 20th and the 21st of May. We'll start playing grounded. Okay. And um, that way, this weekend, we'll make sure we get. The gameplay in we need to get in um, in anticipation of finishing things up before Tears of the Kingdom, then Tears of the Kingdom next weekend, and then uh, you know after that it'll just be Tears of the Kingdom during the week, and, and we can play Grounded on the weekend, right? <laughs> Ooh. Really? Wait, what? Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, that's not good. Pinky, are you working way over right now? Uh, probably this coming week, because what, you don't have your, your co-worker there or whatever? Are you going to be working like a super overtime or something? Oh, all right. Uh, that sucks, Kayla. That's that's. Uh, have they said why? Did you like uh, try to address it with management or anything? Yeah. You're just anticipating it being super brutal, dude. That sucks, man. That's terrible. Let's go ahead and do what we do, baby. Let's jump into this video gaming news stuff, and uh, we'll see we'll see how this headache goes, and see how we, we get into the uh, how we do today with gaming stuff, man. 
Mm. Oh, so you haven't even you haven't even been there. You just saw it. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's wild. That's wild. Let's dive in here. I'm sorry. That sucks, Kayla. Oh, okay. Okay. Wild. That's that's no bueno. No good. No good. All right. Uh, well, I hope you get it sorted out. I hope you get it sorted out. That's uh, that's that's kind of kind of not good. Yeah. Seems seems bad. Let's uh, let's do this. Let's dive in here. Let's do this video gaming news stuff. Let's see what's going on today in the world of video games. Oh yeah, I figured you would. Yeah, I just didn't know if you actually saw it, the news schedule while you were at, at work or something. That was what I was thinking. Yeah. Let's do this. Um, this is what we're listening to right now. Bullets per minute. Uh, we listen to it quite often because I love it and the game's dope too. So, uh, go check it out. Bullets per minute is a roguelike, um, first person shooting rhythm based game. It's really, really good. Awesome gameplay. Awesome art style. It's a, it's a, it's a cool game, man. And, uh, the soundtrack's really cool too. So, uh, highly recommend go check it out. We'll go ahead and, uh, kill the music and we'll start diving into the news here. Cool. Ooh, 10 to 12 hour shifts, bro. Been there, been there. Yeah, yeah, Kayla, yeah. Yeah, It. I, I think a lot of that in the US has to do with like, companies have, uh, every position has to be coded a, cer a certain way uh, for, for hiring. And if uh, it depends on how it's coded as to whether they can like pull your hours back or not. Um, stuff like that, I think is the way that goes. I'm not, I'm not totally positive, but yeah. <laughs> it's a sign for sure, dude. Well, that's cool, man. Nice. Whatever. Stop trying to make destiny. Wait, what? <laughs> All right, I'm not, I'm not going to dive into that. Uh, what? Blizzard locked a new World of Warcraft item behind an old World Warcraft item? What? Now players are price gouging each other to get it? Fantastic. Great. That's great. <laughs> Let's take a look at this. Nice, dude. Well played, Blizzard. Well played. Let's see what else we have here. Turn those off. Um, the. I mean, it's good. Hogwarts Legacy's added arachnophobia mode for spider-free gaming. We've seen a lot of that kind of stuff for accessibility for people that have phobias, things like that. It's good. It's good. I just, I have a, like a, a bit of a thing against Hogwarts Legacy because PC version of that game was such just absolute garbage. I agree. I agree. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think that the thing that we have to do though is like, put ourselves into other people's shoes that might have uh, phobias, you know, so. Or specific issues anyways, whether it be like the same thing we see. So accessibility is becoming a very, very big deal, right? Whether it be um, accessibility in the form of peripherals that allow people to get in and play games that, uh, you know, have a hard time with traditional peripherals, um, peripheral devices, input devices, or um, things like, you know, better text that you can change the text in game to help people that, that suffer from like dyslexia or, you know, uh, color options for people that are colorblind, you know, to help them in the game, you know, you can t toggle those kinds of options all the way through things of like, 
you know, like grounded has the same thing where I think you can actually turn uh, basically all the spiders and grounded. You can just make them look like big, like blobs of, of like weirdness instead of looking like spiders for people that have like arachnophobia. Um, there's all kinds of, even through like, um, we saw here lately where the, um, horizon forbidden West, I think is incorporating, uh, with their new DLC burning shores. I think it was, they're incorporating like a, uh, I can't remember what it's called. People that have a fear of, of, uh, water, like especially, um, deep water, you know, they've, they've incorporated a mode where, where it'll help people that have those kinds of fears, you know? And, um, yeah, I, I think that for me, a lot of turning a lot of that kind of stuff off is like immersion ruining, but for a lot of people that suffer with that kind of, those kinds of phobias and things, they won't, they wouldn't be able to otherwise experience the game at all. So allowing people the option, that's the big thing. It's an option, right? So giving people the option to be able to experience those games um, when they probably wouldn't be able to dive into it at all just because of these inherent fears they have that are, are pretty significant. Yeah, it, it's it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Like I've got a vice on my head, dude. It's just cranking. It's pretty brutal. Superman game possibly teased by Warner Brothers. Uh, yo. Well, here's the hope, and it'll be just as good as, you know, Gotham Knights or Hogwarts. You're right, Warner Brothers. You got suck. It's another one of those developers I'm just not fond of, dude. I mean, it sucks because Warner Brothers has, they own so many IPs, man. Warner Brothers owns so many. They they have so many licenses for, for different um, universes and characters and stuff like that, man. And um, it's brutal just being at their, you know their will basically for a lot of gaming universes warner brothers sucks i don't like warner brothers what is this amd pushes the envelope on gaming graphics with new what risen z1 processors uh We've kind of talked about these already, um, and we've we've looked at a little bit of stuff on them too. So I'm not going to dive into this, um, but they do look pretty solid, and um, we'll probably be seeing these be thrown into a lot of the. I think this is actually what's in the new ASUS uh, handheld. Does it say it in here anywhere? I think this is the chip in the new ASUS handheld uh, that is trying to be like the competitor to the Steam Deck. And we'll probably see these in a lot more um, devices of that nature too. But we've talked about it. I'm not going to dive into it right now. Yeah, we talked about this yesterday. PS Plus brings back one of the best free games ever for a limited time. All right. I don't know if I trust Sports Illustrated to have a non-biased take on games, dude. Uh, Steam update makes finding new games easier. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Really, dude?
I'm not going to read through this whole thing, but <clears throat> here's what I'll say. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ, dude. I'll read into it. I'll read into it. I like it when games are pieces of trash. I like paying $70 for a game that sucks. You know? Yo, Steph's. What's up, Stephs? How you doing? Happy Happy Saturday, my friend. What's going on? I just look, man. Fine, I, I can understand. Like, I, I get it. I mean, to be fair, like, it, there's there there is it. There's a little bit of. It's kind of like Bethesda games, right? Like Bethesda games have have become synonymous with being kind of buggy. You know what I mean? And so. To an extent, there, there's a bit of a a like an expectation for them to have some quirky kind of things in them that is it gives you that Bethesda ness, you know. But if you're gonna sit there and write an article and try to tell me that like basically, I mean, we'll we'll, we'll take it, we'll take a deep dive into that article. But it, I mean, it almost comes off as like they're trying to take the uh, opposite approach of. People calling out games for AAA games that are trash, that AAA developers are trying to make people pay 70 bucks for, you know, that should be called out for being trash because there's a really bad trend in the industry right now. You've got other people like this, the person that wrote this article, that are trying to like take the opposite approach and be like, Oh, well, I like it that they're trash. It's basically like what they're saying. It's like, give me a break, man. No, no, you can't. You can't. I, I don't believe that people are going to sit there and go, um, yeah, nice, dude. I want to go pay 70 bucks for a game. And, and you're going to, uh, one of the lines I read in there too, and we'll read the article also, but it's like, you, you, one of the lines was like something about liking the fact that the, the game, um, doesn't feel polished i'm sorry man but i am not looking for uh, i mean uh, nobody expects a game to be just perfect ever because it's just that's not realistic but for a game to just uh feel all the way around bad performance wise content wise stuff I, i'm not gonna believe somebody when they go that's what i'm looking for i'm not gonna believe that man <clears throat> not much steps just Kicking the day off with a little bit of some video gaming news, as we do every day, man, before we get into some gaming content. What's up with you? Trying to find, on, find out what is going on here in the industry, man. Uh, 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 Armory Core 6 hype has driven up prices for the old games. Huh. I mean... Uh, Interesting. It's interesting. Have you guys seen how much the collector's edition of this game is? <laughs> like the collector's edition of Armored Core 6 is like $400 US. I think it was what it was. Four or $500 US. It is, uh, it is pricey. Um, I mean, it's got a, it's got a pretty dope, like, mech that comes along with it and like a garage and everything that the, the mech goes in it's that's still pricey though man um i'm not gonna i'm not gonna dive into this i'll just keep reiterating uh what i said but i do i love mech games i'm i'm hyped for armor core 6 but um i would love to play it on pc 
but I'm not going to play anything that is a From Software game uh, on PC on release anymore after getting burnt by Elden Ring. Having to play through Elden Ring on release on PC uh, was so brutal, just with all the performance issues and everything. It felt horrible trying to play through that game on release. So uh, they burnt me on that one, man. I'm not going to let them burn me again. So we'll wait and see. We already talked about this. Yeah, this is coming if you didn't know. The uh, the big changes to usernames for uh, Discord. Most of us, you know what I mean, are in uh, one, if not more than one Discord server. And, um, yo, it's random mode time. Then, um, you know, you just need to know that, like, this this username change thing is coming. You're going to get prompted by Discord. Basically, the the older your Discord account is, the quicker you're going to get notified that you're going to have to change your username to uh, the new permanent uh, kind of variation of, of what they've determined needs to be usernames moving forward. And um, the longer you wait, the more likely you're going to run into the issue of not being able to get usernames that you want. So if you get prompted for it, you need to go ahead and just change it. Random mode, go. Feels bad. Yeah, let's go ahead and look at our other search real quick. We talked about this yesterday. If you didn't see uh, this already or you didn't see yesterday's news segment, um, basically it was uh, what Wii U Sports, The Last of Us, um, Barbie Dress Up, and um, man, what was that? Here, I'll just list them for you real quick. The, uh, what's the actual, uh, computer space, man. Computer space is just what they're referring to it as. Um, these are the, uh, Hall of Fame inductees for video game hall of, uh, video game hall of fame inductees for this year. I, uh, I talked about it yesterday at the end of the stream this was the last article we went over i've got to say i wasn't happy about the last of us making it in over uh golden eye 007 that just didn't feel appropriate to me uh not that the last of us doesn't deserve to be up in the runnings and everything but um for something like golden eye to be pushed aside for the last of us. I just don't see it. I don't see it for how long golden eye has, has been around and has been a, a industry changing game. Um, it, it was crazy to me that, uh, the last of us got in over golden eye 007. That was, that was weird to me. Oh, Jesus. No. Oh, God. Bandai Namco uh, it looks like they've got a job listing up. Confirming Little Nightmares 3. Oh, jeez, dude. Let's hope it's more like Little Nightmares 1 than it was Little Nightmares 2. Little Nightmares 2 was a hot bag of garbage, dude. That game sucked. Double Dragon Gaiden, dude. Rise of the Dragons. Let's take a look at this. I have flushed very, very few games that I've ever played and streamed. Little Nightmares 2 was very, very, very close to getting flushed. That game sucked. It was terrible.
I'm not going to dive into this, but I think less and less and less people are buying games on day one. I think this is starting to become um, less and less of a trend. People uh, pre-ordering and people buying games day one is something that people are, are not doing anymore. And it's, uh, it's a result of just constantly feeling cheated. Unfortunately. Unannounced Star Wars game teased by insiders. We'll, we'll take a look at that. We already talked about the new uh, Apple Arcade games and everything yesterday, so we won't hit on that. Already hit on this as well. I did, I can dude. I just still can't get over Carl Urban playing uh, Johnny Cage over uh, like somebody like Kano. He's just so perfect for something like Kano, dude. I'm sure he'll do he'll do he'll do great as Johnny Cage. I just don't see any. I just don't see him playing Johnny Cage. He's a good actor though. Uh, Star Citizen reveals Invictus launch week 2953 and free fly. Take a peek. Yeah, we keep getting uh, news coming out talking about how big the budget is for GTA 6 it's it's apparently just stupid like apparently well over a billion it it, it seems uh we we know what he's gotten anything um official on that front but it's a lot it's a lot of money <laughs> let's just stick with this for today let's just stick with this We'll see what we got up in here. All right. Uh, Double Dragon Guide and Rise of the Dragons brings the allure of nostalgic fighting games. Let's take a look at this, dude. Rated E10 for ages 10 and up. Brother, I can't max. Oh, no. I can't max it, guys. Do that music. Let's go. Can't touch me. No escape. Take this. Finally. My turn. It. No
First released in 1987, Double Dragon became a popular beat-em-up style co-op arcade video game. I just showed off a bunch of my retro, like uh, 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 a lot of my my old school video game stuff I still have. And <laughs> funny enough, like I pulled out my old NES and Double Dragon, original Double Dragon is actually in, it was in my NES, <laughs> dude. Since its inception, the franchise has grown over the decades to encompass a range of titles across all major gaming consoles. Now the franchise is reaching back to its beginning with its forthcoming Double Dragon Guide and Rise of the Dragons. Fostering a sense of nostalgia, the game uh, re-institutes the allure of vintage co-op fighting games. The game's retro pixelated design is a standout feature, which transports players back to their favorite uh, arcade. Additional features include a selection of 13 characters and a new tag team ability. Leading the storyline are the characters Jimmy and Billy Lee, who find themselves in a pseudo-post-apocalyptic New York City. Check out the trailer above, which we just did. Supposed to launch this fall on all major gaming consoles. All right. Cool. If you need more out of it, I'll link it for you. There you go. Unannounced Star Wars game teased by insiders. A new Star Wars game is being teased by multiple insiders. Star Wars is one of the biggest franchises on the planet and has managed to earn that reputation by extending well beyond its impressively large films. Over the years, Star Wars has... Okay, yeah, dude. Um, yeah, and with Star Wars games, we've seen uh, games across like basically all genres as well. EA has already confirmed that a new... Uh, most uh, are a lot of genres anyways. EA has already confirmed that a new uh, RTS Star Wars game is in the works with Respawn. You guys know uh, the latest thing that Respawn released? Anybody want to take a guess? It's another Star Wars game. <sighs> the hot piece of garbage. There's your next hint. Yeah, Jedi Survivor. Yeah, yeah. So EA has already confirmed that a new RTS Star Wars game is in the works with Respawn. But there appears to be another RTS Star Wars game from a different developer in the pipeline. So two real-time strategy Star Wars games coming. Uh, what? VGC's Andy Robinson noted that a different unannounced RTS Star Wars game is coming soon. We won't have to wait long to learn more. Uh, this was corroborated by Star Wars aficionado and insider Jordan Mason. So it seems that multiple people are aware of this project. Based on Robinson saying that we shouldn't have to wait much longer to hear about it, which could mean a reveal is planned for Summer Games Fest in June. As for who might be making this game, no one really knows. Disney has started licensing Star Wars out to a number of publishers after previously having an exclusive deal with EA that didn't pan out super well. EA has only released four Star Wars games in the last decade with various degrees of success. It seems like we'll be getting a lot more Star Wars in, a, in the gaming world going forward. Hopefully that means it will come with a lot more variety. Either way, it's all something to keep an eye out for in the coming weeks and months. How about we just focus on like not as many games, don't worry about as much variety, and just start focusing currently on quality let's not worry about quantity right now I, I think there's just too much focus on there's just too much dude everybody just wants to keep pumping out subpar crap games not that there aren't some companies that are doing a, a, a pretty solid job but look i mean it feels like we're just being slammed with terrible games all the time so can we can can all these developers just chill out and just start trying to focus on making some quality quality games games that perform pretty well and have some decent content in them rather than just I mean, why do we have two Star Wars games right now that are both real time strategy games <laughs> in development oh, wait like why what Jesus. Okay, man, whatever. Um, Star Citizen reveals Invictus launch week 2953 and free fly event details teases new ship brand. Um, Star Citizen developer Cloud Imperium Games detailed what fans can expect from the upcoming Invictus launch week 2953 event. 
The event will begin on May 19th and end on May 30th. It will involve the traditional free fly event uh, that will let everyone try the game without needing to pledge any money, while also enjoying the ability to test out pretty much all the flyable starships. The event will also include the expo that will return to Area 18 on the uh, Kurskant-like urban planet R-Corp, and the reveal of new ships. Specifically, we get the tease of a new manufacturer, Mirai. Uh, this is interesting as Mirai will be showcased alongside MISC, and the logo is similar. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a tuner brand associated with MISC uh, dedicated to creating racing ships, pretty much like Nissan's Nismo brand in the real world. Uh, on top of this, a Javelin class destroyer will be available to tour, albeit we do not know if it will include new sections uh, we did not see in previous years. If you're wondering about the name Invictus Launch Week, it's unrelated to the actual launch of the game. It's actually a celebration of the military fleet of the United uh, Empire of Earth, 2953 is the in-universe date. Um, as it progresses with the real world calendar, just 930 years in the future. Trailer below. Here you go, guys. Pretty sure those were X-Wings. Pretty positive those were X-Wings. I mean, that's, we've talked about Star Citizen quite a bit. We've even got uh, Mithril is um, a, a Star Citizen player, you know. It's one of those games that I don't, I don't really know how to address it. I don't, I, don't, I don't feel super great about it, really, to be honest, just because of... And I, I probably need to, it, you know, I, I don't have experience playing the game. And that's one thing, like... Uh, I, it's, it's hard for me to have a, a real strong opinion on it without that kind of personal experience, but just knowing that the game was, it's been in development since like 2011, it was supposed to, they said full release in 2014. So we're nine years later and it's still not there. Every, every content update they have is still called an alpha update. This thing, this game has raised over six hundred million dollars for development over that time period, and uh, I, it's one, it's one of those real weird situations where I'm like, obviously there's potential in it, you know. Um, there are a lot of notable people that are behind the, the you know, the development of this game, and um, it, but it's like they just keep reaching and reaching and reaching without finishing other things first. I, I don't know. It's a, it's a weird situation, so. Um, I don't know. It's a hard, it's a, it's, it's one of those difficult things for me to really. Even care to want to dive into just because it seems like. It seems like a game they're never going to get to a, an actual completed state of. You know, I, I, I don't know. That's, that's the way it comes off anyways. The developer also released a detailed calendar to the event with different days dedicated to different brands. As usual, Drake will celebrate its own separate Defense Con event. Since the brand isn't really in the military's good graces, so it isn't uh, invited to the expo proper. Uh, another video released yesterday focuses on a new racing track and the works for the game for those who enjoy Space Mario Kart. Let's take a look. <laughs> The public roadmap on the robertspaceindustries.com website is the place to check out the new features, locations, gameplay systems, and technologies currently being developed for both Star Citizen and Squadron 42. But as with all things in game development, there are gaps, small breaks, quick moments when a single developer is forced to wait for another dependency to be finished before work on their primary 
or even secondary tasks may continue. Now these happen at every game studio on every game project in development, but the stories of what fills these in-between moments, or ninja missions as animation director Steve Bender referred to them on last week's Star Citizen Live, are rarely if ever. This is very long. Um... So for this new track, obviously we want to kind of keep it different uh, and create just something show me new. The, uh, show me the gameplay might here. Might or might not end up uh, kind of in the final racetrack. Show us so the gameplay. Or not. Do some. We're going to see the gameplay. Okay, a little bit, looks like. Thanks for watching. I gotta get back to mm. my real work now. Okay. So what we learned this week? All we right. That in between tasks. Yeah, so in the meanwhile, Star Citizen's growing crowdfunding campaign continues to make progress. The overall tally has recently passed 568 million. That is just the crowdfunding of it. They're well over 600 million at this point with some other uh, backing. Um, the, the number of registered users also recently passed 4.5 million. Now at four, uh, well, yeah. Not all of them are paying players, though, since many registered accounts uh, access free fly events. According to the latest information that creative director Chris Roberts himself shared in October of last year, 1.7 million players are actually paying customers. Of course, that number is a few months old, so it's probably higher now. If you need more, here you go. To be fair, our, our buddy Mithril does uh, enjoy the game a lot. It's just one of those situations for me that just, uh, I think, comes off as a bad situation. And, and I think to other people at this point that have stuck uh, with the game for a while, it feels kind of bad just because it, it feels like it's just never going to fully be finished not that i mean any kind of live service game like this like a large game like this doesn't you, you don't ever expect it to be you don't want it to be done but what i'm talking about is like the base game being completed and then then you add to it like i said they they've we're nine years after when they said they were going to fully release this game and they're still pushing out anything they push out content wise for this is still called alpha content. And uh, that's, it's just a weird situation, man. It's just weird. Bandai Namco job listings appear to confirm little nightmares three, the third installment of the popular horror game series, little nightmares could be on the way. According to recent Bandai Namco job listings, um, recent Bandai Namco job listings point to the continuation of, was that Tarsier studios hit horror franchise, little nightmares. Second installment of the Little Nightmares series uh, released a critical acclaim in early 2021 and brought it to new heights. Dude, Little Nightmares 2 sucked. I don't even know how it's rated this high. I had so many issues playing this game. So many issues. All kinds of like quest items and stuff that like wouldn't spawn in the game. I mean, you name it. There was just a ton of crap that was wrong with this game. It felt terrible. It felt really, really bad. I did not enjoy the, I loved the first one. The second one felt terrible dude i was not a fan of this the second game little nightmares developer tarsier was uh acquired in december 2019 by an ever-expanding embracer group little nightmares 2 still in production at the time under bandai uh publishing the studio would be tragically ripped from the franchise after the sequel released in 2021 as bandai uh maintained ownership of the little nightmares ip after this separation questions arose about the future of the franchise with uh tarsier no longer being able to work on it under embracer group uh, um, recent Bandai job listings on LinkedIn and Games Jobs Direct call for an intern and a producer to specifically work on the Little Nightmares IP. With Tarsier Studios out of the picture, 
According to these listings, it seems like Bandai Europe, uh, operating out of Lyon, France, will be handling the development of the franchise moving forward. Ooh, interesting. Uh, well, one of the postings mentions managing the product development from concept until release date as one of the role's responsibilities. Seems to indicate the next little nightmares title is still in the very early stages of pre-production if at all, and is likely years away from releasing. Uh, Tarsier Studios is a smaller team made up of around 70 plus employees of, as of 2022, and likely less while both highly praised Little Nightmares titles were being worked on. With a team of that size, Little Nightmares games understandably took a long time to develop. Now that development of the franchise is in the hands of the much larger Bandai Namco Europe, it's possible that the turnaround of the little, next Little Nightmares title could be somewhat shorter. Um... Yeah, Little Nightmare 2 ending left the door open for a third numbered title. While these job postings didn't mention Little Nightmares 3 specifically, it would be safe to assume that that's the direction Bandai is going to take. There's always the possibility of a spinoff happening instead. Uh, Tarsaris Studios expanded the world of Little Nightmares with the second installment, so a spinoff following other characters caught up in the grim world of the Pale City would make a lot of sense. With uh, Tarsaris Studios creating a new IP with Embracer Group that looks very familiar to its past work, uh, on the horror franchise and Bandai Europe taking over the development of the next installment of Little Nightmares. It looks like fans of the series and of horror games in general are about to have, a re uh, have it really good. We'll see. But we'll, uh, we'll keep track. We'll keep track. PlayStation Plus brings back one of the best free games ever for limited time. One of the best games ever made free with PlayStation Plus has apparently been brought back, but only for a limited time. <clears throat> As you know, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Persona 5 was removed from service last year, but for whatever reason, it's back at least for some users and in some regions of the world. Whether this is a bug or not is unclear, but the fact that it is not universal suggests it's not intentional and by design. That said, while some PS5 users are reporting that the game is still not available, Many have already claimed it, and so far, PlayStation is honoring the downloads. Um, at the moment of publishing, neither PlayStation nor Sega nor Atlas nor any individual involved with any of the three implicated parties have committed, uh, commented on this development. We don't expect this to change for a few reasons, but if it does, we'll be sure to update this, this story. Um, interesting. Well, go check it out. If you got PS Plus, you might uh, go take a quick look. And if you've been wanting to play Persona 5, grab it. I'll give you the link here. <clears throat> Steam Update makes finding games, new games, easier. For many Steam users who spend time browsing the Steam store trying to find something new to play, Valve just put out an update for the platform that should help you in your search. Uh, the update revamped the search feature itself with more varied results to be displayed now whenever you're searching for something. You can still find games quickly if you know exactly what you're looking for, of course, but if you search, uh, if you just have a general idea of what it is you're in the mood for, the new search function should be able to provide more helpful results. Uh, when you search for games in Steam previously, the results were just that, games. You'd find what you were most likely looking for up near the top with re related results below and so on. Now, however, you'll be able to search for more than just games. Tags, broad categories, developers, publishers, even entire franchises will show up in search results. This means that if you know what type of game you want to play, something in the dungeon crawler genre, for example, or something with zombies, you can just type that into the search bar to get going. Oh, that's cool. Nice. Very cool. Other broad terms like Bethesda or Star Wars will work there too uh, to give an idea of what you can look for. Valve said the search function will now also handle misspellings better and will still most likely give you the result you're looking for. Updates are live now in the Steam client once you've updated it to the latest version and are available in the mobile app too if you're looking for games on the go. Solid. Very cool. All right, man. Look, I'm just going to get to the conclusion here. But I, this is, I like imperfect games like Redfall. I have never played a perfect game. So on that front, I like 
many, many, many imperfect games. I've never played a perfect game. Okay? But... This uh, author here, starts off with the recent release of Redfall has been a sour affair. At a time Xbox really needed a hit, they released what both critics and gamers have perceived as a misfire. I have not played the game yet, though thanks to Game Pass I will, but it got me thinking of the games I've played over the years. What I've realized is that sometimes I prefer games that are imperfect or mediocre. I don't believe the perfect game exists. There are games that come strikingly close to that. Anything by Naughty Dog. Uh, the Last of Us Part 1 for PC port being an outlier. Has been perfectly paced. Brilliantly written and polished within an inch of its life. The Forza series is always stellar. Most Mario games uh, are on point. Don't get me wrong. I love these games. There's something about them that can leave me feeling cold. They feel clinical, riskless, dare I say, boring. I have a great fondness for games that maybe score six and sevens, not the disasters like Life of Black Tiger, but games that took a few swings, had a few misses, but for the most part created an endearing experience in its own right. <sighs> so, I I agree. I've I've never... I've never found a game that I went, this is perfect. There's absolutely nothing in this game that could be done better. Um, I agree with that. But um, and I will also say that, look, I, I tout this all the time. As, as human beings, we're all different. We all have different preferences. Um, <clears throat> The, the, the things that we enjoy about entertainment and, and especially the world of video games and just because a, a game reviews one way doesn't you know mean that that's it, exactly the experience you're gonna have with it you know because uh, naturally we, we just we have different preferences as, as far as you know our entertainment goes so um, something that somebody else finds to be maybe, off putting about a title you might not have an issue with and vice versa also so um it just kind of depends but <clears throat> where i have a kind of an issue with this is like well let's get down and, and read the uh the conclusion here and um Games have been mal uh, maligned and are often touted online as being trash or mediocre but uh, do you know what? Sometimes I like it when a game doesn't get it all right. Sometimes I like the annoying quirks. You can feel a certain passion seeping through when a game isn't as polished. I will play Redfall at some point. I will make my own choices about what I like and don't like about the game. But if it's anything like the above, uh, maybe it'll be more special to me than the game of the year. Maybe. Either way, I refuse to get sucked into the uh, hyperbolic uh, mudslinging gamers do when a game doesn't get 10 out of 10. <clears throat> I hate games getting rated 10 out of 10. I find it super off-putting. I don't agree with it. 10 out of 10 means the game was perfect and that there's nothing, absolutely nothing that could have been better about the game. I find it stupid that people rate games 10 out of 10. I don't like it. If anything, it should be like a nine point something or what, because there's, you can't, I've never ever played a game that was absolutely flawless. I just haven't. But I, I don't totally agree with this take here, man. Uh, you know, like I, I can understand there's there's to an extent that's why people enjoy Bethesda to an extent there's quirkiness in those games there's bugs in those games that pop up and uh, and from time to time there are bugs that just make you chuckle because it's like I just got Bethesda it's just part of those experiences right you it's just become you know kind of synonymous with playing their games and to an extent, it's it's what's made them <clears throat> almost fun in a way, right? But to say that, um, I mean, like like this last in the conclusion here, uh, refuse to get sucked into the mudslinging gamers do when a game doesn't get ten out of ten. Look, man, 
you know, that's also not fair. Because what... There are a lot of games that these developers are making and are hyping up to us. They wanted more money for these AAA games, right? So they're charging 70 bucks now, even though they didn't need to. <clears throat> um, they wanted more money for more budgets for better games. They wanted to make us better games, but they're releasing crap, right? And so to say that, like, I'm not going to, you know, trash these games that deserve to be trashed, that's not fair either. Because there are all these games getting released that are, are hot pieces of garbage that deserve to be criticized. And I understand maybe not wanting to jump on that bandwagon until you try it out for yourself. I respect that. I respect that. Um, but to just kind of put these statements out here, like, you know, to make it sound like people are just jumping on a bandwagon and, um, <sighs> throwing undue criticism at, at a developer and a game, that's not fair either. When obviously the game is, is underperforming both in areas of, of, and most of the time, this is the fact content is bad technical performance is bad they're unoptimized you know there's a difference between like a few bugs here and there you know like everybody uh, understands gaming you know we deal with that kind of stuff there's a difference between that and just terrible terrible releases and that's what we keep getting so this isn't fair dude you can't i mean you know and again to each their own everybody enjoys their their entertainment in different ways but Man, give me a break. It's trying to make it sound like everybody's just jumping on a band bandwagon and, and throwing like undue criticism at games like Redfall. Dude, that's not fair. They wanted they wanted more money for bigger budgets for better games, but we're not getting better games. They 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 deserve this criticism. So I don't know. Go go play and enjoy your you know, terrible games or whatever, but don't act like these games don't, don't deserve to be criticized like this. Don't, don't act like these developers don't deserve to, to, uh, get backlash for, you know, marketing these games up and then not following through with what, what they're promising us. That sucks. That's not fair. <clears throat> Superman game possibly teased by Warner Brothers. Superman game possibly, sorry guys, Superman game possibly teased by Warner Brothers CEO. Um, new Superman game might finally be happening after all these years. We've had an explosion of truly fantastic superhero games over the last decade or so. As publishers started to move away from movie tie-ins, we started to see amazing superhero games like the Batman Arkham series, Spider-Man, and so on. We've also seen bad ones. <laughs> We have seen good ones. <clears throat> but we've seen bad ones, Gotham Knights. Um, more on the way with a new Iron Man game, Captain America, Black Panther game, Wolverine. Oh, dude, and uh, that's why, I, dude, I'm so, I, I cannot wait. I cannot wait for Insomniac to be done with Spider-Man 2. Because <laughs> Insomniac being finished with Spider-Man 2 means that they're going to be... A, fully focused on Wolverine, apparently. That's the way it seems anyways. Arkham Knight started very bad on PC. Yeah, yeah. I don't necessarily recall that, but I do, uh, I, I have uh, heard people uh, bring that back up here recently. I don't recall that originally, but yeah, yeah. What's up, Ferret? What's going on, man? 
Um, so, and apparently this Wolverine game is going to be like a more of a ma- mature take from what I understand. They're trying to, they're trying to make this more of a mature take, um, more of a mature rated game, uh, which could be really, really cool in my opinion. Anyways, there's one superhero that has been left in the dust when it comes to gaming Superman. He's shown up in an ensemble games like injustice and will be the villain in suicide squad kill the justice league. Look, I'm calling it right now. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is not going to be very good. I don't see it, dude. Brought people with the the 1080 Ti to their knee. Oh, for real? Oh, gross, dude. Yeah, because that was that was like the uh, that was the GPU of the times, dude. That was the 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 big banger, baby. Yeah, that was like the the forty ninety dude of of today's date, you know. Yeah, it was just people were just getting crushed, even running a ten eighty ti. Oh no, dude, Jesus, that's crazy. Um, yeah, look, man, uh, this whole Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, dude. I don't see it. This is just this is like the same way, like Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. You only had you only had a, a, a nine sixty back then, bro. I was rocking. <laughs> you, you had me beat. Bro. You had me beat, dude. <laughs> um, this game has been delayed a number of times now. Which delays are fine. They're they're warranted if needed, you know. But. Uh, this game was to the point of where they were like showcasing big parts of this game. And then they were like, Oh wait, we gotta, we gotta, you know, um, it just, so it's been delayed a couple of times that after the showcasing so much of the game and then going, Oh wait, now we need to delay it again. Uh, that was a weird play that makes me really concerned. There's a ton of monetization in this game. There's battle pass and there's a microtransaction store and and uh, we already know they're coming out with like DLC characters and uh, you know stuff like that and they want you to pay full price for it on release too and it just uh, I just don't really see it man I d- I just don't really see it I'm kind of calling it right now it, I I think this is gonna be one of those games that like even if it like performs well and everything on release, I think that like content wise, it's just going to kind of probably be mediocre at best. It'll probably be something you'll get like a little bit of little bit of fun out of, and it'll just probably get lackluster and boring. I'm guessing I'm, I'm like, I'm not sure on that. I'm just kind of from everything I've seen so far. That's, that's what I'm kind of guessing. Um, but I don't have a I don't have a lot of hope for it to be honest. Uh, it has been nearly twenty years since the man has still got his own game. With all that said, that may be close to changing. As spotted by Tweetown, Warner Brothers CEO David Zaslav uh, seems to suggest during recent investor call that we could see a new S- Superman game around the time of Superman Legacy, a new Superman movie from James Gunn that's set to release in twenty twenty five. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Look at this troll, dude. Oh man, what a troll! What's up, dude? Um, I, I dude, I'll, I'll just, I, I still feel like it. You know, it, it feels bad that like <laughs> they had, uh, they had already signed on Henry Cavill to to do Superman again and. He was, he apparently was really stoked about it. And then James Gunn came in and, and got uh kind of appointed to redo the entire universe around uh what Warner Brothers is doing here with with the uh the superhero stuff uh, of their their universe and and um he was like, nope, you're out. <laughs> he like he crushed it all, dude. He flattened that entire universe. He's like starting it all from scratch. Um 
he didn't outright confirm a new game was coming, but he uh, but was speaking about how WB was unique. The unique advantage to owning all of that IP is uh, that its video game developers work on and suggested people will quote spend more time hanging out in the Superman world and universe. When we launch a product on Max or HBO, and when we have a game that belongs to us, but now there's this in betweener," said Zaslav. Uh, it may be in the next couple of years that we launch a Superman movie and people spend more time and there's more economics of people just hanging out in the Superman world and universe. James Gunn has spoken about how they, the new DC universe will weave in gaming with its films and television shows. So this could be one of the first attempts at that. As of right now, we have no idea what any of this could look like. If a new Superman game is happening, it'll probably be a while before we hear more about it. It's exciting to hear Warner Brothers even mentioning the idea of it. There was a... Uh, I think somebody took like they took like Spider Man. They took like Spider Man and they modded the game out to be Superman. So it wasn't like a a, a real Superman game, but it looked pretty cool. It was pretty wild. Uh, no, no, not really. Uh, the main reason he quit doing Witcher was because uh, he he got fed up with the writers. Yeah, he had been struggling with that for a while, apparently. Um, he's, uh, you know, he's he's one of us, dude. He's he's a nerd, <laughs> and uh, he he uh, he had been, yeah. That was the main part of it, from what I understand. Um, and I think it just coincided. I think it just coincided where he uh, he was kind of being fed like he he had kind of hit his limit with the writing the writers on that show and was like all right this is going to be it for me and then also got offered superman um uh, yeah i agree dude you are too dude you're a nerd shut up you're a nerd you're a nerd you're just having to learn a little bit you know like I have to kind of help you build your PC and stuff. You're, you're just like you're like a nerd in training, dude. You know, like sometimes you can't get through tutorials and games, but you're trying. You know, you're trying. <laughs> yeah, I agree, Ferret. Yeah. <laughs> 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 bro i mean as long as you've been like playing games and using a pc and everything i just you know i figured that you would have enough logic up in there i mean it was my fault i guess i just figured there'd be enough logic in your head enough critical thinking to understand that you're going to have to have some kind of input peripheral device connected to tell the machine what it, you need it to do. And that's my fault, you know? I mean, uh, I just I took it for granted, you know? I just took it for granted that you had, you had more critical thinking skills than, you know, I, I won't do it again, man. I'll make sure next time that you know, I've got a, a, a much more elaborate step-by-step -step guide for you, but you know, I'm trying, dude. I'm trying to, I'm trying to help you nerd out. I'm trying. Everybody makes mistakes, you know? Yeah, it did. Fair. Yeah, it did suck. Yeah. But I mean, at least we got it figured out. <laughs> at least we got it figured out. And you know, I mean, I, th I think the fortunate thing right there was that he, at least he had another CPU around that he could use. Um, Because otherwise he was just going to have to buy another uh, motherboard. The one that he had sitting around, it's not like he could have returned it or anything either. It was just he had had it sitting around forever. So it was like beyond the return period or anything. <laughs> Your trip, Doug. Yeah, the, uh, I think it just was more of like a situation where it just – it was like it coincided, you know, but I think he was already done with that. I think he had already let Netflix know that he was like, he was done with that series. Uh, I'm pretty sure it just, it was a, it was a coincidence that he got offered to, but I could be wrong too. I couldn't be misremembering. I, and I'm not sure. I haven't looked that much into it. That's just what I, I 
thought I remembered about how that kind of went down. But it could have it could have been that situation too, Farrett. It could have been that, that uh, Henry Cavill actually, you know, was like pondering the idea of being done with Witcher because he was having so much strife with the writers and um, got offered Superman and was like, all right, yeah, I'm done. You know, it could have been that situation. Absolutely. No doubt. So who knows? There's there's probably some good info out there on what exactly went down. I just haven't. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, I remember playing uh, Superman back on Super Nintendo, dude. Superman on Super Nintendo. I remember playing that for a while. <laughs> Wild. All right. The last article I have for the day. Uh, yeah, I won't be able to watch it. The thing is, like, it, it'd be different if they were, like, going to try and... See, I think they can spin it off different ways. There are, there are other characters in the world of Witcher that they can, uh, you know, play on. Uh, they could even go as far as, like, trying to um dig into the the early years of Geralt or even you know like late years of Geralt and I don't know like all the lore and um text that's been built up behind that character but just for specifically what they're doing with this series right now there is no way I'll be able to watch season four I can't wait for season three but I just can't believe that they think they're going to be able to replace somebody like that has become that like that that synonymous with that role. You know, it's like I I I it'll it'll ruin it'll ruin it for me. Try like seeing somebody else cast in that role. Yeah, I, I just won't be able to do it anymore. It's just me. And it's not that even that I think that like the uh the actor replacing actor, which I think is going to be uh uh Hemsworth, right? Uh, Liam Liam Hemsworth uh is who I think they're replacing him with for season four. It's not that I think he's going to do a bad job or anything. I just, I won't be able to look at him playing Geralt and, and, and actually believe it anymore because it just seeing somebody look different in that role and uh, it, it, it won't be the same exact mannerisms and things like that. You know, it just won't work for me. <clears throat> yeah. I yeah, just, I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it happening. Yeah. Uh. Uh, last thing I have, if you guys have anything to add, let me know and we'll address it before we move on. I've got a, uh, I've got a crushing headache, dude. We'll see what we get done today. I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know if I feel like playing shadows, uh, over loathing today, man. Um, we might just hang out for a bit and see what I feel like doing. But, uh, yeah, let me know if you got anything else to add and, uh, Oh yeah, for sure, fair. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no doubt, dude. No doubt. Oh yeah, no, nah, it's all right, dude. Yeah, I mean, if if it if it doesn't, I mean, I took I took some Tylenol this morning. I had a headache yesterday too, <clears throat> and uh, I just woke up this morning and it was it was much much worse than yesterday. So, um, I took some Tylenol. If it doesn't let up i'll i'll just do a short day or something dude yeah play through play like a champion yeah 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 absolutely i'm trying i'm trying we'll figure it out we'll figure it out yeah um blizzard locked a new world of warcraft item behind an old world of warcraft item and now players are price gouging each other to get it Fantastic. Do you still have your Onyxia Scale Cloak lying around? Because you're going to need it. Embers of Neltharion, uh, the first big update to World of Warcraft Dragonflight, has brought a new zone raid and dungeons to Blizzard's long-running MMO, and of course a whole bunch of new and interesting items, one of which requires an, a very old and uninteresting item to acquire. As Starim uh, on the Icy Veins forum uh, via Games Radar explains that there's a blazing shadow flame chest located at coordinates 28.8, 47.5 of the new Zaralic cavern zone. The problem is that the shadow flame surrounding the chest cannot be bypassed unless you have an Onyxia 
scale cloak. The problem that uh, with that is that the Onyxia scale cloak is an item from vanilla. Wow, what? And not many people have kept one lying around. That predictably led to a surge in demand for relevant crafting materials and a commensurate spike in prices for said materials. Thanks to a recently discovered secret requiring an old cloak, farmed ingredients for the cloak, which includes Skelevanixia, is now going for over 10000 Uh, what it, it was last week. Redditor uh, Tommy Tronics wrote, If you got any in the bank, sell them before the demand dies down. But even crafting these cloaks is a hassle because they can only be made by leather workers with 300 skill points in classic leather working. So, of course, unbound cloaks are also uh, very suddenly hot items on the auction block. Prices vary wildly from server to server. Uh, 20,000 gold on one, uh, 9,000 on another. As Tommy Tronix uh, predicted, demand and pricing has reportedly dropped somewhat since word of this new item got out, but it seems like there's still money to be made. Not on the auction house on my server yesterday, put one up for 100k, not expecting anyone to actually buy it, but it did sell. Uh, <laughs> there are a few more up now for 40k, sold one yesterday for 25k. When, uh, when that sold so easily, I made two more. Both sold for 40 k uh, wouldn't say it's worth it, but I won't complain. Um, what was the big reward for all this expense and horsing around? A Blazing Shadow Flame Cinder, a toy that wraps the player in the Shadow Flame effect, but only as a cosmetic for 10 minutes. No way. <laughs> Oh, hey, bro. All right, dude. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, dude, I had been eating a bunch of ibuprofen here lately, and I'm afraid that uh, it might have been jacking me up a little bit. I that was always my go-to too, dude. I was like, I was always eat. I I, I always took a lot of ibuprofen, but I, I've I've been trying to not take ibuprofen. Um. So uh, I've been trying to trying to not take ibuprofen here lately because just it I got to a point where it was like it felt like I was just eating ibuprofen like candy. What I needed to be doing is switching in between, doing like Tylenol then ibuprofen, Tylenol then ibuprofen, you know. But uh, I got I got I just got to a bad point. I just had a big giant bottle of ibuprofen, man. <laughs> and I'm just it's like anytime I was like had a headache or anything, man. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, water is always good too. But dude, I was just like popping ibuprofen all the time. I just had a big, massive bottle of ibuprofen. It was just like put sea salt in water, drink it. That sounds terrible. No. <laughs> secret of the trolls yeah dude yeah yeah makes sense makes sense cool man that's the jam -a that's, hey, that that's one was on me <laughs> that's the news dude it's kind of it's kind of been a uh a bleak day for news compared to what we we usually get but that's all right man um we've been we've been getting a lot of news it's ramping up dude uh june's coming you know and the closer we get to june the more info we're getting on on a lot of stuff that's going to be coming our way you know summer summer's a big deal in gaming and june's where it really starts kicking off and and uh so the more we get in uh towards june and into june man the uh the new stuff really starts getting thick thick baby like me you know real thick so I don't know, but it's all right to have like a kind of a, a chill day every once in a while with the news, man. It's going to happen. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know. Man, I might actually play tape to tape today for a little bit. Just try it out. I feel like just chilling, doing something a little bit different than Shadows. So I might play tape to tape today. I don't know. You ate two hot dogs this morning? Did you chew them or did you just like full throat them, dog? Oh, for real, DZA? Nice, dude. Nice. Nice. 
lit, bro. <laughs> What'd you have on the hot dogs, dude? Did you get you some Chicago dogs? What'd you put on them? <laughs> Glizzy Guzzler 3000, bro. Oh, Jesus. I might play tape to tape today. Breakfast? Plain? Word. Nice. Nice. Yeah, so again, if anybody didn't hear, so I was kind of thinking about starting to play grounded this weekend, but I decided against it because I do want to get tape to tape played. I do want to finish up Shadows Over Loathing also. And, um, I'm not going to play grounded next weekend either because, uh, this coming Friday is when tears of the kingdom drops. Right. So, um, so, so we're, we're going to, um, we're going to do that. We're going to do tears of the kingdom on Friday. And then I won't want to, I won't, I'll be wanting to play tears of the kingdom all weekend next weekend. So I was like, well, We'll just we'll game our games uh, tape to tape and Shadows Over Loathing this weekend and through this week and till Friday. Then we'll do Tears of the Kingdom through next weekend and then um, the weekend after is when we'll start playing Grounded. So that's that's kind of the play right now. Um, good news segment. Thanks guys, I appreciate it. Um, I don't know if anybody's checking out this content, man, or anything else we have out there on the uh, YouTube channel. We got clips from new segments the entire new segments we've got episodes full full playthroughs of uh games we've we've played and and uh just funny clips and stuff that's gone on here in the channel and if you're enjoying any of it come hang out with us we go live at 6 a.m cst every single day um and uh we just have a good time we'd like to have more like-minded cool individuals come be a part of what we do so uh 6 a.m. CST every single day. Start off with video gaming news before we dive into whatever gaming content we have planned for the rest of the day. Other than that, man, um, I don't know. We'll be back at it tomorrow with more video gaming news for uh, May 7th. Till then, you guys stay healthy, stay safe, be kind. Cool.